Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. It's me, Dr. V. Jay Kumar. I'm making lecture videos for the benefit of mechanical engineering students. If this is your first time and not yet subscribed yet, please do hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell icon so that to get notified all my forthcoming brand new videos. In this lecture video, we are going to see various concepts and the numerical problem involving flywheel in punching press or riveting machine. We know that flywheels are required whenever there are fluctuations either in the power input or power output. As in case of IC engine, we have fluctuating power input whereas the power output is constant. Sometimes the input power is constant whereas the power output will be fluctuating as in case of punching press, riveting machine and shearing machine. In this lecture video, we are going to talk about various concepts as well as solve numerical problems involving flywheel in punching press. Are you ready? Yes, let's get started. Before going on to the problem, First, let us discuss the various concepts involved in punching press problem. What is the role of a flywheel in punching press? Punching press basically employs either slider crank mechanism or cam follower mechanism for its operation. I am going to illustrate slider crank mechanism. Okay? Yes. Right, this is a slider crank mechanism. So this is a line of uh, stroke or line of operation. So this is my crank, then connecting door. Instead of slider, we are replacing with the punch. Am I right? Yes. When angle is theta A, the crank pin will be at point A, it will start commencing the punching operation. When crank moves to angle theta B, when it moves from point A to point A dash, you can see pin has moved from B to B dash. That means it has penetrated through the plate. So punching operation will be completed at point A dash. So A to A dash, punching operation is completed. At point A, punching begins. At point A dash, punching ends. Is it clear? First, let us understand the basic arrangement of the punching press. This is my shaft number one, which I call it as a motor shaft. So there is a electric motor which is mounted on a shaft. That shaft has gear one. So this gear engages with gear two. The gear two is mounted on shaft two, which I call it as a flywheel shaft, because on that shaft, I have gears two and three and also a flywheel. So this power obtained in gear three is transmitted to gear four, which in turn operates the slider crank mechanism. Is it clear for you? From A to A dash, or in other words, when the crank rotated from theta A to theta B, punching operation completed. At point A, energy required will be maximum. What will happen at point A dash? Energy required after completion of the punching. Punching is done. That time, 
the energy required will be minimum. So we can say from A to A dash, energy is reduced from maximum energy to minimum energy. That means fluctuation of energy is more during A to A dash. Or we can say during the angle theta B minus theta A, during this angle, useful cutting stroke. Whereas the rest of the angle, what is that? 360 degree minus theta B minus theta A, the remaining rotation, there are no useful work is being done. There are no load acting on the crankshaft. So this in a way, idle stroke. Because of which, there is a fluctuation of energy. So when there is a fluctuation of energy, we need flywheel. So this huge variation in the speed will be regulated by employing flywheel. Understood? So this is the role of the flywheel. So as always, wherever there is a flywheel design is involved, determination of maximum fluctuation of energy is involved. Before going there, we need to know few key terms in these punching press problems. Cycle time. What is cycle time? Cycle time means time required to punch a hole. So the total time required for this 360 degree rotation of the crank is what known as cycle time. The second terminology, actual punching time. When punch is touching here, how much time it takes to make this hole, right? So that is known as actual punching time or actual or exact machining time. Am I right? Exactly. Of course, cycle time will be greater than actual punching time. Am I right? Excellent. How to find the cycle time? In our problem, they will give number of holes per minute. For example, if they have given us, say, 20 holes per minute, it means that 20 holes in 60 seconds. That means one hole in three seconds. So from this, we can say cycle time for the given data is three seconds. Is that clear? That means time required to punch a hole. A hole will be punched for every rotation of the crank. So one two pi radian will be completed in three second cycle time for this example. Is that clear? Actual punching time, how it will be given? Normally, they will be giving you, say, it takes one by 10 seconds for punching. That means punching time is equal to 0.1 second, right? This is the actual punching time. Next, we should determine energy required to punch a hole. Or in other words, we can call it as energy required for a cycle, right? This we can determine by using the given data, which I call it as E1. Mostly, they will ask us to determine motor power, power rating of a motor. Power rating of the motor can be determined by energy required per second. You know that. Work done is Newton meter, work done per second, I will get watts. I got energy required for a cycle, but punching happens only for a very short period of time. So now I need to find energy supplied by motor during punching time, which I call as E2. How can I find E2? If I know power rating of the motor, which is nothing but power record per second, multiplied by actual punching time, we can get this answer. Am I right? Once I know E2 and E1, very well we can determine maximum fluctuation of energy. That is what very important. Delta E is equal to maximum energy minus minimum energy. Or in other words, in this case, 
delta E is equal to E1 minus E2. So what are the six steps? First, we have to find the cycle time, actual punching time, the energy required per hole or energy required for the entire cycle. Then we can find power rating of the motor by determining energy required per second. Then we can find energy supplied by motor during punching time, E2. Once we know E1 and E2, we can find maximum fluctuation of energy. Is it clear? Excellent. Still, there are some confusion. No worries. I am going to explain the concept using turning moment diagram. Right? What is the cycle crank angle? Two pi radians. What is the input torque supplied by the motor? Is it a fluctuating or constant? Constant. So I could uh, take this line. Now, when theta A only punching starts, when the punching ends, theta B. When that load comes into picture, only when punching starts happening, all other strokes are idle. So I can say this is my angle theta A, this is my angle theta B. So how the diagram will look like here? Year zero, year zero. Excellent. Instead of telling this as a crank angle, let me try to uh, give in terms of time. This is actually cycle time. You know, only during this actual punching time, we need energy. What is E1? E1 means energy required per hole. What is the energy required per hole? This entire energy. The shaded area is what energy required per hole, E1. Am I right? Clear? Excellent. What is E2? Energy supplied by motor during punching time. This shaded area is nothing but energy supplied by motor during punching time. To make a energy racket per hole, I need the whole energy, which I call it as E1. This is the energy required during punching time is known as E2. Now you tell me, how can I find delta E? Maximum energy minus minimum energy. E1 minus E2. Yes, that shaded area above the mean torque line will give us delta E. Excellent. That's it. This is the concept involved in the punching press. Once we know delta E, by using delta E relations, we can determine all other racket data. Right. We shall solve two numerical problems now. There you are. This is the first problem. The punching press is racket to punch 30 mm diameter hole. Diameter of the hole is given in a plate of 20 mm thickness. So thickness of the plate to be punched is given 20 mm at the rate of 20 volts per minute. 20 volts per minute. So immediately I can understand they are indirectly giving us the data to find cycle time. It requires 6 Newton meter of energy per mm square. So they are given energy required per mm square of shared area. If punching takes place one tenth of the second, what is that? Exactly. This is what we call actual punching time. The speed of the flywheel varies from 160 to 140 RPM. So this is maximum speed N1. This is 
minimum speed f2 determine mass of the flywheel so we need to find m having radius of gyration 1 meter so k value is given as 1 meter right that's it that's the problem there you are they are given diameter of the hole thickness of the plate maximum speed minimum speed radius of gyration what we need to find mass of the flywheel solution first since they have given n1 and n2 i can find omega 1 and omega 2 So any flywheel problem, what is the most important thing is to determine maximum fluctuation of energy delta E. How can we do that? We can apply those steps which I have listed in the theory. Step number one, find cycle time. How can I find the cycle time? It's given that 20 holes per minute. 20 holes requires 60 seconds. Or in other words, one hole require 60 by 20 second. That means three second. Therefore, cycle time value is three second. Now let us find punching time. Punching time is given. What is that? One tenth of second. Point one second is the punching time. Clear? What is the third step? to find energy required per hole which i call it as here e1 so this is the plate so let us take this is the punch when punch comes there this will be a circular in cross section this thickness is given and also the diameter there is a hole i want to find the shared area how to find the shared area pi d multiplied by thickness will give shared area. But it is given that 1 mm squared shared area requires 6 Newton meter energy. It is given in the data. So I am going to convert shared area into a energy. Step number three clear. Energy racket per hole. Or in other words, this is the energy racket per cycle. Now I will go to step number four. Step number four is to find motor power. We know that power of the motor or power rating of the motor is equal to energy required per second. We know that energy required per hole. Energy required per hole is nothing but energy required per cycle. Am I right? So I want per second. How can I do that? divided by cycle time. Is it clear? Excellent. So how can I find that? Three, seven, six, nine point nine. What is the unit? Newton meter per second. So this would be watts. Clear? Yes. So what is step number five? We need to find E2. To find energy supplied by motor during punching. How can I find E2? E2 is equal to power rating of the motor, energy required per second, multiplied by actual punching time. Is that clear? Now step number six, to find delta E. We know that 
delta E is equal to maximum energy minus minimum energy. Just by calculation, we are getting the delta E value. Yes. Now we can find mass of the flywheel. We know that delta E is equal to mk square omega square cs. So they have not given cs value. So we have other variations of the formula. So in this case, they have given us omega 1 value and omega 2 value. Using this formula, we can find the required answer. By calculation, I am getting mass of the flywheel as 333 kilogram. That's it. This is the end of the problem one. Now we will see second problem. The procedure remains same, except that the punching time will be given in different forms, in different ways. We will see how punching time is given indirectly in this problem. Punching machine carries 6 volts per minute. This is to find the cycle time, each hole of 40 mm diameter, thickness of the plate is given, 8 Newton meter of energy per mm square is given, energy is given, the punch has a stroke of 95 mm, stroke value is given, find the power of the motor racket, find P. If this mean speed of the flywheel is given as 20 meter per second linear velocity is given. If total fluctuation of speed is not to exceed 3% of the mean speed, what do you mean by that? They are given CS value directly. Determine mass of the flywheel. We have to find M value. Is it clear? So let us go to step number one to find cycle time. Right, we found cycle time as we did it in the previous problem. What is the second step? To find actual punching time. So in this, they are given two data. One is thickness of the plate is given. 35 mm and also they are given stroke of the punch 95 mm stroke here refers to the punch it moves from one extreme position to another extreme position we used to call stroke is the distance from top dead center to bottom dead center so what i mean to say 95 mm the punch will move downwards 95 mm punch will move upward then only one cycle will be completed. 180 degree downward stroke, 180 degree upward stroke. Total distance traveled by a punch. How much? Upward stroke plus downward stroke. 95 plus 95. 190 mm is the total travel. 190 mm distance require how much cycle time? 10 seconds. Now I want to know actual punching time actual punching time passes through how much thickness 35 mm is the thickness of the plate that means how much time it might have taken to travel 35 mm distance 35 mm distance would have taken how much time 10 divided by 190 multiplied by 35 actual punching time is equal to 1.842 second right only step number two is new in this problem all other steps are exactly the same as we did in our numerical problem number one clear yes
I have determined energy required per hole as 35,186 Newton meter. There you are. So by substituting there, I get the power of the motor answer, right? Clear? The same procedure that we have followed in numerical problem number one, okay? Now we can very well find maximum fluctuation of energy delta E. Excellent, we got the very important answer, delta E, right? In the question, they have asked us to find mass of the flywheel. We know that. We have equivalent formula in our theory that says mv square cs. That's it. This is the end of the problem. Dear students, as always, I have given a problem for practice. You try this at your home and check your answers. Okay? Hope this video helped you to understand the concept easier. If so, like this video, share to your friends, and subscribe the channel. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Take care. Bye.